Hi, my name is Mal. I'm a clinical education fellow at Imperial College London. I'm in my F3 year, having just completed F1 and F2 in the northwest of England, Deanery, um, where I did an academic foundation programme within medical education. Um, I've been in the job role for about a month and a half now with uh, the last of the cohort of students that have returned from summer starting last week or so. So since starting this role, things that I've really enjoyed is getting involved with teaching and um, the preparation for the students all sort of returning back to university. So that's there's different modules, there's different year groups, which I found um, very interesting and um, the kind of thought going into each section um, of modules, exams, assessment has all been very interesting. Uh, research is something that I've started uh, to get involved with since I've got here um, with my supervisor. And I suppose just meeting colleagues, networking, um, becoming familiar with other fellows, other teaching fellows and education fellows, meeting the faculty, meeting all the different heads of years um, and modules as well. So that's all been really interesting. So I think one thing that definitely really helped this year was um, discussions with my predecessor who had the job role before me. So getting an idea of what's expected, timelines, you know, the hidden curriculum almost within who's the best person to contact, what's the best way to ensure that things happen as they're supposed to. So that's been great. Um, Organisation, I probably goes without saying, is key to, um, you know, making sure you're getting to all your meetings when you should be, um, meeting deadlines, meeting the right people. Um, I think my experience from my, my master's and during medical school and during my academic foundation programme has also really helped with settling into the job role, just because I've had experience with teaching programmes and previous education research. I think um, from a, a, a non-academic perspective, maintaining the work-life balance has also been really important and goes without saying um, making sure you're exercising, seeing friends, um, making sure you're continuing your hobbies is the same as during F1 and F2, um, keeps you keeps you grounded, keeps you focused. So there's nothing in particular that I would say has hindered me. I suppose um, making sure that I've um, become familiar with all the software from a practical point of view, um, within like curriculum mapping, um, exam writing, ensuring that research all goes through um, the correct channels. That's probably been something that I maybe didn't have much experience in previously, and I suppose is specific to the university. And if anyone was doing a um, education fellow or a clinical fellow job is something that they probably have to get familiar with in any sort of research teaching. Um, or even, I suppose, moving hospitals when you're getting used to the patient's systems and stuff. So that's the only thing I would say has been something new that's been a challenge for me. Um, so I suppose the, uh, the behind the scenes of um, assessment writing regarding um, all the different processes of making sure that the exams and the assessments reach the, the correct standard that they should be reaching. Um, and uh, alongside with that, um, standard setting has been something that I, I've i briefly seen when I've done curriculum design research, but not fully appreciated. So I suppose that surprised me. So at the moment, it's, um, you know, we're starting to think about certain assessments that are taking place, but for example, There'll be exam writing days where um, clinical specialty uh, consultants, registrars, trainees will all come together to write the exams. They then have to be piloted. So um, see if they practically work with an actor, 
um, seeing the scripts work, the mark schemes work, making sure that everything um, is perfect for the students. And then following that, looking at the results, seeing outliers. Um, so it's a whole process. <laughs> So for me, the next couple of months from a job perspective um, will involve all the students returning and me really getting stuck into teaching a lot more. Um, as I mentioned previously, having the different modules um, and the different year groups um, is something that I'm really looking forward to because um, I think so far it's been a, a gentle uh, ease into the role while the students were away over summer especially for the early years so um, I think that's something I'm looking forward to I'm in the process of sorting out ethics and ethics approvals for some of the research projects that I'm doing so again once they're back um, getting guidance from seniors and supervisors and hopefully using that to guide me through this research um, and I've actually nearly finished my PG cert uh, within education. So the next step would be the diploma um, for that. So that's kind of my targets over the next couple of months. So what I would say is I'd recommend an F3 for anyone that um, was considering something like a junior clinical fellow or so JCF or, or an education fellow or a research fellow if they're not sure about what path they want to go down what training program they want to go down or they want to gain more specific experience or have the opportunity to do more research or more teaching or spend the year polishing up their portfolio I would highly recommend um taking up the fellow job having a look early on in the year if say you're an f2 um, or even an f3 that's considering an f4 um, and just seeing what's out there and th there's bound to be something from my conversations with friends who haven't gone to say australia or new zealand and most people i know have done some sort of fellow this year and so far i've heard good things from a variety of uh, locations and um, job roles. <laughs>